My name is Nadia Bryden and um, I actually work at Breast Cancer Haven in Fulham Broadway in London where we support women and men um, who've been affected by breast cancer and actually families as well because obviously families are affected by breast cancer. Um, <clears throat> I am a medical herbalist and I've got lots of different qualifications in terms of complementary medicine um, but my particular interest is nutrition, but in particular, taking it down even further, my particular interest is introducing raw green vegetables into people's diets because we're told to eat five fruit and vegetables a day, but most people focus in on the fruit and uh, they forget the vegetables. And if they eat the vegetables, they forget the greens. And it's the greens that contain the most micronutrients and the greens actually is what's created the oxygen on the planet. And health is about getting a lot of oxygen in the body and so the more raw greens that we eat the um, more it balances the acid alkaline in the body and um, their antioxidants and hopefully get rid of free radicals. So um, just tell us a little bit about because yeah, let's say it comes to the health thing for the first time yeah, and yes. you know, free radicals and all this sort of stuff I mean what, what is the uh, what first let's just outline the physiological sort of aspect of what you're talking about, you know, within the human being when you're talking about their health, um, free radicals, well, how does all this help in reducing all this? What does it do? I mean, what, is there? Um, well, the most important thing is to, is to help the body to detox and the, and, and diet should include a lot of micronutrients because of the micronutrients and the amino acids and the enzymes that uh, are the building blocks of repairing the cells and the body on a daily basis. And the, in, in, the, in the course of the day, with any um, meta metabolic process, there are toxins that are created and stresses create acidity and toxins in the body. And so by eating a healthy diet, especially if we eat a lot of green vegetables, it actually helps to eliminate these toxins. So as much as we're taking in healthy micronutrients, it helps the body to eliminate the waste products efficiently because an awful lot of people, for instance, are very constipated. Um, and and, and it, it's the elimination channels that are very, very important to maintain health as much as it is to take in very high quality micronutrient foods because Obviously now an awful lot more people are eating junk foods which is very high in calories, very low in micronutrients and so we're not actually feeding the body enough to get the energy that we need that we need to just handle the stress that we deal with on a daily basis and just deal with daily living. So we've got to put the food into our bodies that are going to maintain health but also eliminate all the toxins that our body is bombarded with such as radiation, um, pollution in general and there has to be something to feed the body to do that and one of the best things to do that is greens, dark leafy greens in particular um, but any green food and it needs to be raw because if, I mean we can obviously cook our greens but the important thing is if we eat a certain amount of raw food every day that improves the elimination channels and we're getting more micronutrients. Mm -hmm. Does that, if that makes yeah, sense? Yeah, it does. Um, what I want to do, I want to get onto the, you know, the detail of the greens and everything like that in just yes. a sec. But I just wondered if you could explain, because a lot of people would see like recommended daily allowance or whatever, and you know, yeah. they'll be following these guidelines. But what is that? What micronutrients? It sounds like something. Oh, something else. sorry. So I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> just from a uh, perspective, yes. what is a micronutrient then, in a sense? Micronutrients, macronutrients are, for in, and then macro means large and micro means small. So a macronutrient is protein, carbohydrates, and fats. So they're the sort of basic construction of the food that we eat. The micronutrients are the, is the nutrition that you can't really see inside that's built in the macronutrients. And this are, these are the vitamins, the minerals, the enzymes. Um, amino acids and, and, and all the things that, that make up, those, those are the micronutrients and those are the really important things that our body needs for the metabolic processes that just for just the energy and for, for creating energy and for everything that our body needs to do to, to replenish energy and to replenish all the cells. 
of the body to keep us healthy. Absolutely. Okay, excellent. So um, should we just move on to a little bit about you know, the idea of um, the juicing and um, you know, what is a good practice for somebody uh, who would like to, you know, what, what sort of things do they get? So they get like a press juicer or whatever. What's the, what's the best kind of... Well, what, what I recommend to people, because an awful lot of people are very fixed in their dietary ways and they don't want to change. So I don't try and change anybody's diet. And it's not about, for me, changing people's diet. But what is really important is to learn how to put in the greens. So I don't tend to say to people that they shouldn't, you know, eat their chocolate bars or their Coca-Cola or alcohol, which may sound very strange, but it's much easier to teach somebody a recipe, for instance, that they can put into their daily diet, that they can have before breakfast and before lunch, um, and then they can eat whatever they want. So the, the way that I do it is I have a particular recipe I mean, everybody's slightly different. If the people are coming to see me on a one-to-one, -one, on an individual basis, then I would actually ta tailor-make their recipe. But generally, I create a recipe that, in that incorporates three portions of raw green vegetables, of which one and a half portions has to be dark leafy greens. Now, a portion is 80 grams. So, wh so what I suggest to people as well is that, that they make it into a smoothie, because a lot of people have digestive issues or they have teeth issues, um, elderly people are, are not eating enough greens and so and the reason is is because they often can't chew them but if they can suck it up through a straw in a smoothie then they're getting fantastic micronutrition and they don't have to chew anything. So um, I did a lot of research on, on trying to find a really cheap blender in order to be able to do this very efficiently because the blender is really important and but most people can't afford an expensive blender so um, I did research the blenders and found that the Philips HR2000, and I'm not associated with the company, but, in, but I did a master's degree research in, um, in actually in nutrition in these smoothies and I had to also research the blenders. And the most efficient blender for the price, which is £27.95 from Argos. It's cheap. It's more expensive if you, if you buy it from a... Um, I'm not trying to... No, no, no. Okay, we'll plug. Like, How you know. do it? No. But the thing is, it's important that people know what to buy that works, that's cheap, because m most people think that to be healthy, they have to spend a lot of money, but that's... What I'm trying to do is to create a system where people could, whereby people can be healthy and they're not, they're not necessarily spending any money or very much money, but also... Anybody in the world can do this. Any nationality, any culture, any any anybody can do it anywhere in the world. So, a cheap juicer um, and the Philips HR2000 is very, very good, very efficient because it has five cutting blades. So what it does is it cuts the vegetables, the, the fiber, very, very finely, makes it very smooth, like a cream, which is really easy to digest. But what that does is it it's breaking down the fibrous cell wall so that it's releasing all the micronutrients because if actually you eat that same amount of food for some reason or we eat very we eat too quickly so we're not chewing enough and the idea is is that really what we should be doing is chewing very slowly and chew every mouthful at least 30 40 50 times but most people don't have the time for that so to 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 blend it in a blender with some water, so what I, my standard recipe is uh, 300 mils of spring water, and I do recommend spring water rather than tap water because of the chemicals and what have you in the tap water. So 300 mils of tap water, 80, spring water. sorry, spring water, what am I saying? Um, so yes, <laughs> 300 mils of spring water, um, and 80 grams of cucumber, which is about that much, um, 80 grams of spinach, and that you can buy bags that are 100 grams, so you can kind of work out, you just put, put in the whole 100 grams, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be exact. But the idea is to have a minimum of the three portions, so 80 grams is one portion of spinach, um, 40 grams of rocket, as an example, and you can again buy a bag of rocket, and you can, you don't even have to weigh it, you can just work out, you know, from, they're usually 70 grams or 100 grams, you just work out what you need. Um, and then, um, celery, uh, I think it's 40 grams of celery, so that's just a small stick about like that. So we've got cucumber, rocket, um, spinach and celery. 
and so the celery is 40 grams, the rocket is 40 grams, the cucumber is 80 grams, and the spinach is 80 grams. So that's actually three portions of raw green vegetables, of which one and a half portions are um, dark leafy greens. Um, what you do is you have to put the water in the blender first, and you put in each vegetable and you blend it first because the expensive machines you can put in everything and blend the whole lot together but the but the cheaper machines especially you know like the Philips you need to do each one and, and build it up because if you put it all in together it's too much for the engine so um, then you can put optional uh, 20 to 40 grams of avocado which makes it more creamy you can put in a little bit of Himalayan salt and I really suggest Himalayan salt rather than table salt because table salt is sodium and chloride whereas Himalayan salt is eight, has got 81 minerals and the minerals are really important in our diet and also a, a teaspoonful of lemon juice because that gives us a little bit of acidity and it's, it just makes it a very nice flavour um, and that's the basic recipe although I do suggest to people to add in half a clove of garlic or a whole clove, but half a clove, you won't taste the garlic, but it brings the flavour out, but you also, garlic is really important as an antibiotic, so it just, it keeps, it boosts our immune system, and you won't smell it if you just put in half a clove, but it's also very good for, for the heart, for circulation, and I really recommend that people do that. Now the other thing that I suggest that people do is put in chlorella, and chlorella is a green algae, and it's just dried algae. Now the thing is about algae is that it has sucked up all the minerals in the water so it's very very high in micronutrients, very high in minerals in particular but it's also got things like B12 in it, uh, it's got something like 500% of the RDA of B12 and, and so many of us are lacking B12 or can't make it. Um, and then it's got a lot of folic acid and we should always be taking folic acid and B12 together so it's got those two together. Um, it's got a lot of vitamin D. I think it's got something like 270% for RDA of vitamin D, although it's the vitamin D2, which is the plant form. And, and so it's really important for our immune system. So I always put in chlorella. Now, the one that I particularly like is sun chlorella because it is made in a, it was grown in a natural environment in natural spring water in an unpolluted area in Taiwan. So it's, it's nowhere near the sort of Japanese radiation fallout that a lot of people are worried about a lot of these algaes that are um, in Japan they might have been affected by the Fukushima radiation so blending all that together and that makes 600 mils and then to split that in half put um, half in the fridge and you drink half before breakfast now you must have it before you eat anything and by having that it helps to balance blood sugar levels so and that means that what Often happens is people eat a lot of cereals and toast and sugar in their tea and the jam on toast. And so they eat a lot of carbohydrates and sugar, which gives them a great sugar rush. And by 11 o'clock, they've got a sugar dip. So taking the greens balances blood sugar levels, reduces the appetite because it, it, it balances the blood sugar levels. And so you don't actually want to eat anything until lunchtime because so many people have a you know, a cup of coffee with some sugar or biscuit at 11 o'clock and that just keeps on setting up this, you know, the blood sugar um, rises and, you know, raise the blood sugar level and you get the dips and what you want to do is to balance out the blood sugar levels and uh, so I suggest that um, you have half the smoothie before breakfast and then half before lunch or if you want to have it mid-morning but always put it in the fridge so that it's cold because the longest um, you you make something with the vegetables, it reduces the, the, it reduces the micronutrient content to break up the cell. So you want to really drink it as quickly as possible. But if you put the second half in a cold fridge and have it before lunch, it's just two or three hours after you've made it. So the micronutrient content is still good. But the thing to do is to not leave it more than 12 hours um, in the fridge. If you're not if you've not drunk it after 12 hours, then throw it away and make a new batch. But the whole idea is is to have lots of micronutrients in your diet um, as fresh as possible in green in green juices and more smoothies. Mm. If that um, makes sense. Yes, it does. Well, other things, because like you said, 
Most people, you know, a piece of toast, what's wrong with that, you know, da, da, da. Most people would. Have a piece of toast in the morning. Oh, well, that's yeah. why it keeps me going. You know, we have a kind of, you know, things that we consider quite natural and, you know, no one's ever told us well, we shouldn't be doing that, you know, so we should, we, well, we should be doing something else to, to maintain health. You know, you, you, a lot of people would come to this and say, oh, yeah, everyone else just eats pieces of toast in the morning and they yeah. seem to be all right. I mean, what, what, what does, you know, you said about the uh, blood sugar levels, what is the effect of that um, like, as far as, like, dis-ease amongst the, in the society, do you think? Oh, that's a very big question. <laughs> um, just in, well, as, as briefly as possible. I mean, first of all, breakfast, as an example, is if we break up that word breaking the fast. If we do a, a fast, we shouldn't go straight into eating sugar. And toast is actually sugar. It's carbohydrate. Um, it's 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 filling, and so it can sort of set you up, you know, for a few hours. But the best thing to have is really if you like, a sort of more of a protein breakfast rather than a sugar breakfast. Now, we think of protein as being, you know, eggs and meat and chicken or whatever. Um, but the interesting thing is that the, the, the chicken and the meat has eaten the greens in order to create the protein because protein is made up of amino acid, which is in greens. So greens is a very protein-rich food to have in, in, in its raw form. So you've got all the building blocks of the protein as amino acids because when we eat protein when we eat an egg or when we eat meat the, the, the digestion the stomach has to break down the amino acids in order to be able to absorb the protein to then make it up into the protein for the body so it really helps take a step away out of that, that process um, for the body by actually having the, the, the greens as raw greens, which is actually a very rich protein as amino acids. So it's very easy for the body to digest the amino acids and make it up into protein. What happens is if we have a lot of sugar for breakfast, it creates quite a lot of acidity in the body. Now this sets up a lot of what we call free radicals, which is one of the um, major things that causes disease or is, 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 is a part of the disease process. Uh, it, creates, it creates acidity and um, by putting in the greens, what it does is it, when, when we've got a lot of free radicals in the body, we need a lot of antioxidants to mop up free radicals. Now, greens contain a lot of antioxidants. There are a lot of vitamin, vitamins and minerals that are, have antioxidant properties and so they mop up all these free radicals and they take them out of the body, they excrete them out of the body. So the more we eat things like toast and sugar and alcohol and coffee and cheese, um, etc., the more free radicals we're creating. But if we don't balance our diet with raw green vegetables, we're, we're not going to be eliminating these free radicals. And free radicals, as I said, contribute towards disease and the aging process. And the more um, greens you have, the more it actually hydrates the skin. And so you, it's, it's actually very anti-aging to eat a lot of raw green vegetables and green smoothies and green juices. And for instance, chlorella as well. Sun chlorella is, as I said, particularly. Yeah, excellent. Uh, I have another question. Um, because you're talking about the, um, what they call superfoods. Yes, way, yeah? and, uh, that's right. Um, you know, spirulina being another one, is it, would you class that as another Absolutely. one? Absolutely. Well, there's, there's, the, the thing is, algae means well, it's, it's a water vegetables, any vegetables that come from the water. So any seaweeds, anything that grows in the water is called an algae. And there are three particular algaes that have become very well known as kind of the superfoods. There's spirulina, blue-green algae, and chlorella. And chlorella is actually a single-celled plant. Um, and it's just one cell, but there's lots and lots and lots of them. So if you go to a pond, you'll see an algae in the, in the pond, and it could be chlorella, which is a single cell plant, and they just bunch together, and they've got a, um, a nucleus in the center of them, and they've got a fibrous cell wall, whereas spirulina and blue-green algae are actually bacteria. So they're, they're quite different, but they're chlorophyll-producing bacteria. And um, the chlorophyll, is really, really important, both in the green vegetables and in the algaes, because they help to excrete toxins out of the body. Now, 
The interesting thing is about chlorella as a particular superfood is that it's got the most chlorophyll of any plant on the entire planet by weight. And that means that it binds to toxins and it helps to take the toxins out of the body. And um, it's particularly interesting and there's been quite a lot of research done with chlorella in women who are pregnant and in breastfeeding women that if they're taking chlorella, it, they, they have found that it reduces the amount of toxins such as dioxins because we eat an awful lot of pesticides when we're um, you know, just buying non-organic vegetables and even meat or whatever. And so our body accumulates lots of pesticides such as dioxins and um, uh, all sorts of uh, you know, plastic sort of, um, I'm trying to think of the word, was it? Um, Xenoestrogens. And, and which are estrogen mimickers, and they are, they are one of the principal um, problems with estrogen receptive cancers, for instance, like in breast cancer. And so it's really important to, um, to have something in the body that actually can take out these toxins like the dioxins and the xenoestrogens, but it, particularly in pregnancy, because um, chlorella has been found in research to reduce the amount of pesticides and toxins going from the mother to the baby and equally from the mother into breast milk. And so the more green foods, but particularly um, chlorella, you, that you can take especially um, in pregnancy and in breastfeeding, it actually does help the body to clear out the, the, these toxins and pesticides so that the, the baby um, is, is much healthier. Um, I just, we've probably got it already, and I was just going to say one last thing I forgot to mention. Uh, the difference between a juice and a smoothie. Um, oh, yeah. Do you know, everybody asks me that question. That's because and, yeah. and I'm so used to doing juices and smoothies, it doesn't occur to me that people wouldn't understand the difference between a juice and a smoothie. And it's probably the most important question, but the difference between a juice and a smoothie is that um, a smoothie, you need a blender, like a liquidizer. And so you put... Um, water into the blender and you put the whole vegetable, you put the spinach, you put um, the, the cucumber, the celery, whatever, and you, and you turn it on and you blend the whole thing to make it into a cold soup, raw soup. And that is a smoothie, so it's very smooth, um, but it incorporates every, the whole plant. Whereas a juice, you need a particular machine that is a juicer, and there are a number of different kinds of juicers. And so it's a bit, if, if, if you can think of the old style of mangles, you'd have, you know, wet washing and you'd, you'd wind it through to, um, what, what would you call it, you know, sort yeah, of like a pressing, mangle. Yeah, yes. pressing, uh... So you've got the, the clothes come out one end, if you like, that's the fibre, and the water is, it goes into, it comes out, so, it's, so a mangle is separating the water from the clothes. And it's the same thing with a vegetable. You put it in a mangle, because a juicer is kind of like a mangle. You can get a, a type of juicer that's like a mangle, or you can get um, one that's got a basket that spins. But essentially, it does the same thing. So what it's doing is it's separating the fibre from the juice. So if you like, the fibre is like the clothes, and it just takes away the juice. And you drink the juice, and you put the fibre onto the garden, or you throw it away. Um, in a sense, a smoothie is a whole food juice, yes. It's, um, it, what it, but I mean, particularly what I think is really important as well about smoothies and juices is that they're hydrating. And one of the most, the worst things is that, you know, we have, especially in the cities and things, we have dry skin, dry hair, dry eyes. Um, and it's very hydrating inside the cell. So, um, and also a lot of people can be quite thirsty, but be still quite waterlogged and what's happened there is that if you're not having things like juices and you're having a lot of fast foods and you're drinking lots of water the water's not getting inside the cell it's staying outside the cell and you need the electrolytes from the vegetables to take the water inside the cell and that's what sort of is anti-aging and that's what stops the stops us getting lots of wrinkles but um, but it's very hydrating very hydrating, you don't feel so thirsty if you're having green smoothies and green juices. Really important. Yeah. So, I mean, would you recommend, uh, is it like an either or, or both is good? Or oh, that's an, yeah, that's another good question. All that sort of stuff. Yeah. And people say, well, what's better? Well, a smoothie really is a food. 
and that's and it's actually working on the large intestines. It's working, you know, to really help the bowels move. I mean, smoothies do. Uh, sorry, juices do as well. Um, but juices, you can drink more micronutrients in a way in the juices, and they're more, if you like, detoxifying and hydrating. And you know, when we drink something, it quenches our thirst. The smoothies do as well, but the smoothies is more of a, of a food. Um, and I say to people, if you can do both every day, that would be fantastic. There are certain situations where I suggest people have the smoothies every day from a medicinal point of view. Um, but it, it depends on people's lifestyle. It's easier to make smoothies. People can just get up, you know, throw the vegetables into a blender, turn it on, put it into a, a bottle if they don't even have time to, to have it before their breakfast or for breakfast, and they take it off to work with them. Whereas a juicer is a little bit more complicated because you have to cut the vegetables up and put them through the juicer, and, and it's sometimes quite complicated to wash them. But whereas a jug, you just put it under the tap and you're away, and you can wash it easily. Uh, I was going to say, what about uh, wheatgrass, obviously? That, that's not from the sea as such. I mean, how would you say that? Yes, I mean, um, wheatgrass is, is really uh, important. It doesn't taste great. Some people love it. It's got a, a, quite a sweet taste. Um, it's really, really high in minerals, very high in micronutrients, very high in enzymes, um, and it's very detoxing as well. Uh, I mean, it, the best way to take it is fresh, but you need a wheatgrass juicer in order to do it, to, to get the fresh uh, fresh wheatgrass. You can go to juice bar, loads of juice bars sell wheatgrass shots, and you know, one ounce shot every day as a minimum is, is really good to have. It's very, um, it, it, all the, it gives you a lot of micronutrients, but it's extremely good for um, hydrating as well, but it's got a lot of chlorophyll. Then you can buy it dried or frozen, um, which is also good, but I would say fresh is always the best. Fresh is, is number one, and then dried and then frozen if you can't get it fresh. But definitely fresh is going to make much more of a much better benefit. So we've mentioned the algae and we've, we, we touched on um, uh, wheatgrass and we've also uh, a few of the other things we mentioned like uh, rocket and things like that. Yes. I mean, <coughs> When you say green leafy vegetables, I mean, you know, what are the things that particularly people could even plant in their garden that might... Oh, know? well, spinach, rocket, um, pak choy is really good, and also what's really, really healing as well is, is anything from the brassica family, um, you know, cabbages, but that's also pak choy is the, same, is the brassica family, um, and actually I think rocket is also the brassica family, so... Um, but yeah, so uh, parsley, coriander, um, uh, just loads of green leafy vegetables, uh, celery, and, and it, what's really sad is when you buy celery now, they've chopped off all the leaves and the, you, know, you only get the stick and actually the leaves are really important as well. So if you're able to grow celery in the garden, have the whole thing. People do tend, oh lettuces, and lettuces are brilliant. They've got slightly a bitter taste, um, but lettuces are rather useful because they, they, they've got, they're soporific, so if people particularly have trouble sleeping, then having um, you know, a lettuce juice or a let, you know, smoothie with lettuce in would be really useful to help people sleep. But actually, because the smoothies and juices contain a lot of magnesium, which is nature's kind of tranquilizer and helps the mind to stop chattering. Um, it helps with sleep a lot. So it's very useful for, for, for sleep. And the most important thing really for smoothies and juices is the elimination but energy. Very few calories, but it gives you an amazing amount of energy. Absolutely uh, incredible. Awesome. Is there anything else you wanted to ask for? Um, yeah, I will. Mean, What's your vision of uh, the future? How, how, could, uh, how could all of this expand? What would you like to see happen? Oh, gosh, how would I like to say Well, I mean, first of all, I think that, as I said, my passion is teaching people how to eat green foods because, to me, it's the key to health. And I would love to see um, cookery classes or smoothie or juicing classes in schools. 
you know, children learning how to eat vegetables, you know, in cookery classes, to be able to know how to just make a simple salad and to be excited about it, how to grow sprouts. Um, and uh, I would really, really like the government to take on board the importance of, um, of, 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 of green vegetables. Vegetables are important, fruit is important, but to emphasise the greens, because I've just done a, um, a master's degree at Westminster University in international public health and nutrition, and my study was to see what the effect of three portions of raw green vegetables would have in the diet of type 2 diabetics over 21 days. And that's not a lot of vegetables over not a very long period of time. And the results were extraordinary. It significantly reduced fasting blood glucose. It reduced the, um, the factors that go with diabetes like waist circumference, um, BMI, um, weight. And it reduced people's symptoms by 50% in just three weeks. So the importance of green, of eating greens, even as salads, in any which way, growing them, eating them, um, juicing them, smoothing them, but to have a minimum of three portions of raw greens every day, of which one and a half portions of raw leafy greens. Many countries in their dietary recommendations put into their dietary guidelines that there should be two or three portions of raw greens or at least greens, but the importance of not cooking them, because if you cook them, you cook the micronutrients out of them, so you're not getting the benefits. Yes, fine, have lots of you know, you know, cooked vegetables in your diet during the day, but at least have some raw greens, very important, and, the, and they must be fresh, not frozen, not tinned, and when you buy green vegetables, they must be really crisp because I say that it's not the food in your life, it's the life in your food and the life in your food is going to give you life and energy and it, it, it's miraculous, it's really, I mean to, to reduce symptoms in three weeks and that was headaches, cramping, depression, um, uh, arthritis, just so many symptoms that people were experiencing by 50% in three weeks by just adding in three portions of raw green vegetables as a smoothie. I mean that's mind-blowing and it's so simple and so many people, I see people walking along the street, old people with sticks and and you know limping along and I think they don't need to necessarily, if they could just have three portions of raw green vegetables a day, actually they would not be having their arthritis or their arthritis because it's anti-inflammatory. Arthritis, for instance, is inflammation. I mean, it, but it, but it helps the body to heal anything. Yeah. Is there any place that you could recommend where people can go on the internet or any you know um, sources that are reputable where they can find out more information about what you're talking about? Yeah. Um, I mean, first of all, the chlorella. Sun Chlorella um, is uh, www.sunchlorella.co.uk, and I think it's .co.uk and not .org.uk, but it's, um, and, and they're very, very helpful in answering any questions. You can buy it online or you could just ring them. Um, there, in terms of learning a little bit more about uh, raw food, there is um, a friend of mine called Jill Swires, and she teaches people um, f over a weekend how to include raw food into the diet. And she's www.jillswires.com. That's J I L S W Y E R S dot com. Um, I do classes regularly at Breast Cancer Haven, where I work, and I do juicing classes and smoothie classes. And that is www thehaven.org.uk. Um, I trained at the Hippocrates Institute originally into the juicing and, and, and raw food um, and the Hippocrates Institute is in, in um, West Palm Beach in Florida and that's www.hippocratesinst.org and that's H-I-P-P-O-C-R-A-T-E-S inst.org and you get a lot of information, a lot of interesting information 
um, at the Hippocrates Institute. They have videos and things like that. Um, I have a YouTube class on green smoothies and green juices. I'm not quite sure. It's um, and I guess you can just Google my name and go YouTube Nadia Bryden. Try that, and you might get the YouTube class up. Um, and what other? Any good use? books or anything? Or oh, I mean, there's loads of fantastic books. There's Dr. Gabriel Cousins, and that's C O U S E N S, and he's written a book called Conscious Eating. Excellent. Um, there is Elaine Bruce who has written a book which is quite simple on juicing um, and I can't remember what the title is um, I can't remember what the title is but there is also Victoria Butenko has very good books on green smoothies when I've written my book they'll be mine but I haven't <laughs> got mine yet but I am in the process of writing it so I will be um, finishing a book on green smoothies and green juicing why it's so important but that's still to come.